you tell the other club members to be here, Reggie? I stuck a note on their school lockers that said four o'clock sharp. Did you say today? I knew I forgot something. <laughs> right. Well, at least read the minutes of the last meeting, Vicky. The last meeting started at 4.03 and broke up at 4.04 when the president said, let's collect dues. <laughs> well, I've got to be going. What's the rush? I have to stop by our pharmacy to pick up a prescription for my mother. She's pregnant. She's going to have a baby. You're kidding. Well, it's either that or she swallowed a basketball. <laughs> you do know all that stuff our babies are made, don't you? Of course I do, except for a few minor details. Such as what? If I knew, they wouldn't be minor. <laughs> I know how babies are made. You do, Vicky? Yes. First a bee stings the father, then the bee stings the mother, then they call in a stork who delivers the baby. <laughs> Say what? Vicky, who told you a dumb story like that? Your father. <laughs> You don't think your father really believes that stuff, do you? Of course not. But if he does, he's in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I think I better have a talk with him and check it out. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Harriet. Bye, Harriet. I'll be glad to see you. <laughs> Boy, I can sure clear a room. <laughs> what are you doing, Vicky? We were talking about making babies. You mean like when a mommy gets? You know, pregnant. <laughs> My father might hear us. I'm not supposed to say that word, let alone talk about it. Talking is not the way you get pregnant. <laughs> How do you get that way? First a bee stings the father, then the bee stings the mother, then they call in a stork who delivers the baby. A bee, huh? Oh, I like that a lot better. A girl at school told me that a girl could get pregnant from kissing a boy. <laughs> Wrong. Jamie's mother kisses his father all the time, and she doesn't look like she swallowed a basketball. <laughs> okay, through the hole. Take up the thread. Pull it through. Uh, you got the idea, Vicky? Got the idea. You give it a try. It takes a lot of practice to get the hang of it. It takes a lot of practice. <laughs> Vicki, nobody likes a show-off robot. <laughs> Hi, Annie. Hi, Hen. Got a kiss? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't get pregnant that way. <laughs> Has she been watching Dr. Ruth on cable TV? <laughs> oh, who knows where she picks things up. Mm. How was your day, honey? Terrible. I even stopped to look at a house for sale on the other side of town. Well, why would we want to live way over there? Because Brandon Brindle lives way over here. Oh, honey, ever since he became head of our department, he's been insufferable. And cheap, he stuck me for lunch again today. Honey, he's the guy who invented going to the restroom when the check arrives. <laughs> I'm dying clothes in there. Hmm. Well, honey, why do you keep letting them get away with it? I calculate it's because honey's no smarter now than he was before. Thanks, Vicky. Go to your cabinet. Go to my cabinet. Go to my cabinet. You always say that when you can't think of something better. I think our robot needs a little slap on her plastic tush. Good afternoon. Hi, Brandon. Come in. This is not going to be a pleasant social visit. We know. What's wrong, Brandon? My wife, Bonnie, and I are very, very, very upset with you. I'm referring to what your Vicky told our sweet, innocent little Harriet. What did Vicky tell Harriet? About se... <laughs> About se... <laughs> S-E-X. Well, Brandon, if you're spelling that for me, I already know about it. 
What exactly did Vicky tell her, Brandon? About having babies. Whoa. Vicky told Harriet that a woman gets pregnant from being stung by a bee. <laughs> you mean that's not the way it happens? Ted. Brandon, I can't imagine where Vicky would have gotten a strange idea like that. Uh, what can you tell? Beats me. <laughs> well, Vicky obviously learned it from somebody around here. Now the question is just what do you propose that I do about Harriet? Well, I guess you'd start by keeping her away from bees. <laughs> That's not funny. No. My little Harriet is only eight years old, and now because of your daughter, I'm going to have to talk to her about sex. I don't even talk to my wife about it. <laughs> we leave notes for each other in the bathroom mirror. <laughs> Ted. Do you think Vicky could have picked up that bee story from Jamie? Well, it's close. She picked it up from Jamie's father. You told her that? Oh, I got it straight from a pregnant parrot. <laughs> Come on, Ted. Why would you program Vicky with a ridiculous story like that? Well, honey, she's supposed to be a 10-year-old kid, you know. So I figured she should know something about the subject. And when I was 10, that's what I thought. <laughs> Hi. Hi, hon. Dad, we have to talk. Would you mind if we went into the living room, Mom? It's kind of man-to-man -man stuff. No, dear, you go right ahead. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> this won't take long, Dad. Got all the time you need, Jamie. What's on your mind? Well, this is kind of hard for me, but I'd like to talk to you about how babies are made. Jamie, that's nothing to be embarrassed about. I'm not. I meant you. <laughs> Dad, how do they make babies? How? 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 how well, they, how? They, uh, with the, you they, know, don't of you? Of course I know. So tell me. All right. I guess it's time, Jamie. Jamie, you see a man and a woman. They, uh, what they do is they, uh, they, they, they talk it over. And, uh, and then the bee stings the man, the bee stings the woman, then they have a baby. I think I hear your mother calling. It's been really nice having this talk with you, Jamie. <clears throat> What he really thinks, and how in the heck did they ever have me? <laughs> what was that all about? S E X. What did you tell him? Hmm? Oh, well, I uh, told him the same thing I told Vicky. Oh, Ted, you didn't. Well, he caught me off guard. It was so sudden, I, I didn't know what else to say. Oh, honey, you can't let him go around thinking that. You know what will happen? What? He'll grow up to be like his father. You really have got to tell him the truth. Yeah, but how much of the truth? Well, why don't you go by the library and pick up one of those books that they use for children to help explain it all? That's a good idea. That's what I'll do. You might even pick up a few pointers yourself. <laughs> about the bees. It's embarrassing. <laughs> Are you sure he wasn't just kidding you? No, my dad doesn't have much humor. <laughs> well, these days, people age fast. Maybe his mind is going and he forgot. <laughs> Someday I've got to tell him the real facts of life. But the problem is, will he believe an 11-year-old kid? <laughs> hey, I've got an idea. They've got these books that tell you all about things like that. You mean Playboy and Penthouse? <laughs> no, the kind of books that parents get from the library to show their kids. Did you ever see one? I didn't have to. I've got an older brother with a big mouth. <laughs> hey, I've got an idea, too. Yeah, I bet it'll work. What's that? Well, you see, since my dad programmed Vicky with the wrong facts of life, I could program her with the right facts of life so she can tell him. What do you mean, program Vicky? Oh, I mean, she's into all that computer stuff. You could even say she's got microchips for her brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, your idea is worth a try. Your dad sure can go through life this way. Yeah. I gotta make him understand that if you step on a bee, the only thing that swells up is your foot. <laughs> Oh, 
I was just writing a letter to you folks. Is there anything you want me to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell them not to worry. About what? That I'm going to strangle Brandon Brendel, but no jury on earth would convict me. Obviously a mercy killing. <laughs> what did he do now? He moved me out of my nice, big, comfortable office into one about the size of a filing cabinet. It doesn't even have a window, just a crack in the wall with a green thing growing out of it. Well, why would he do that? Well, isn't it obvious? To get back at me for what Vicky said to Harriet about S-E-X. Oh, honey, I'm sure it's just temporary. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, by the way, uh, did you get a chance to look into that book that we talked about yesterday for Jamie? Yeah, honey. I had no idea the library had so many books about how to tell a kid the facts of life. They even have one where things pop out at you. <laughs> you ever come face to face with a cross-eyed chromosome in 3D? <laughs> it scared me. I screamed out loud. They asked me to leave the library. Oh, honey, Jamie's in his room now. Why don't you go have that talk with him? I'll do it tomorrow. First things first. I'm gonna write that idiot Brindle a letter and let him know what I really think about him. I wanna do it while I'm still hot. Ted, is that wise? No, but it's so satisfying. <laughs> okay, how does this sound? May all the cholesterol in your veins find a home in your fat head. <laughs> finished one already. Oh, good. Let me see it. <laughs> oh, Vicky, these socks are supposed to be for Ted, not Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Hi, honey. Hi. What's this? It's a sock that Vicky made for you. Oh, looks like a turtleneck sweater for a snake. <laughs> Why would you give it to Brandon? Oh, honey. You know that letter I wrote to Brandon yesterday? Yeah. Well, this morning I dropped it off in the corner mailbox. I was hoping you wouldn't. I wish I hadn't. After I got to work, I found out why Brandon moved me into that closet. Why? The company president is having my office redecorated as a surprise for my fifth anniversary with the firm. Oh, no. Oh, no. I could kick myself. Oh, I could help you. I could help both of you. My only hope is that the mailman hasn't picked up the mail yet from that corner mailbox. Oh, well, Ted, uh, maybe we should call the post office and find out what their pickup schedule is. Maybe you lucked out. I wish I could get that letter from the box, but fast. Get that letter from the box, but fast. I don't think it'll work, honey. Once you mail a letter, they don't give it back. They deliver it. Well, at least it gives you a 50-50 chance. What do you mean? Well, you know the Postal Service. Either they deliver it or they lose it. Hope they keep their record intact. Ted, why don't you apologize to Brandon in advance and then he'll forgive you? Are you kidding? He still hasn't forgiven his baby doctor for slapping his face by mistake. <laughs> oh, no. That's probably Brendel now. All right, I stand behind everything I said in that letter. In fact, you ought to thank me for some of the things I left out. You said get the letter from the mailbox. Oh no, that's not what I meant, Vicky. Now you tell me. <laughs> Vicky, come here, let me look at the schedule. Ted. They picked up the mail this morning. Oh, no. Well, I better take this back before they pick me up here. Vicky, get it to me. Go! This is heavy. Go! Ted! Oh, Ted! <laughs> Open your eyes, Vicky. Good morning. Good morning. Come on out. We got work to do. But first, clean up my room and make my bed. No. <laughs> Vicky, a robot doesn't say no. It does when your mother tells it to say no. 
great. Well, there's something else you can do for me. You see, it's Saturday, so my dad's home this morning. And I'm going to tell you the real facts of life, and you're going to tell them to him. I already know them. The bee stings the man, and then the bee Stop. stings... That stuff's for kindergarten. Or my father. <laughs> Forget all that. Now listen carefully. This is really going to open your circuits. We got our morning mail. Dum da dum dum. You know what that means? Letter from Jack Webb. No, it means that Brendel got his mail too. My letter was probably in it. Do you think he'd believe April Fool a little early? <laughs> yeah. I get it. Oh, hi, Brandon. How are you? Angry. Yeah, furious. I. Oh, I am so teed off. I could kill. Ted, it's for you. <laughs> Morning, Brandon. This letter that I just got is the vilest, the most contemptible, vicious piece of character assassination I've ever read. I know, Brandon, but... The person who wrote this should be horsewhipped. Mm. Uh, Brandon, I think the person who wrote the letter feels just terrible about it. I doubt it. No, uh, to give you some idea of the mentality of this sleazeball, he didn't even have the nerve to sign it. I know, Brandon, but... What? <laughs> well, see for yourself. Honey, the sleazeball didn't sign it. <laughs> Obviously a lucky sleazeball. Yeah. I can't show this letter to my wife. She puts me on such a pedestal, you know. I'm sure. Normally we, sh we share everything. We never hide anything from each other. Of course, we get undressed in the dark. <laughs> Brandon, why are you showing this letter to Ted? Well, he knows everybody at work. Can you think of anybody who hates me? Oh, Brandon, I think most of the people at work think of you the same way I do. Gosh, Ted, that's awful nice to hear. Yeah. I said, Brandon, why don't you let me get rid of that nasty letter? I mean, we don't want Bonnie to see this even by accident, do we? That's a good idea. Ted, I always knew you were a real friend. Oh. No matter what Bonnie says. But I better be going. Bye. <laughs> Now, are you sure you got everything I told you, Vicky? All the information is in my memory bank. Good. Now go into the kitchen and tell my dad you want to talk to him. And don't take no for an answer. Well, honey, I hope you learned your lesson about poison pen letters. Oh, I sure have. Never signed them. <laughs> I guess I was so upset I forgot to. <laughs> I have to have a talk with you. Yeah, well, not now, Vicky. After, after I'm finished eating. Now. <laughs> Vicky! Vicky! Vicky, what are you doing? Vicky! We have to have a man's man talk. Vicky, would you be careful? My arm doesn't screw off like yours does. <laughs> All right, Vicky. What do you want? You have to learn the real facts of life. Your B story is for the birds. Oh, is that right? Yes, this is the way it really happens. And that's not all. <laughs> no, 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 that's enough, Vicky. <laughs> See, that's an awful lot to absorb at one time. There's a lot more where it came from. Not when I get through with your memory bank. No doubt you, uh, you heard that from, uh, Jamie. No doubt. <laughs> Ted, what was that all about with Vicky? Oh, uh, nothing. Well, why don't you go have that talk with Jamie? Oh, it's not necessary, honey. He's set for life. <laughs> I'll get it, Dad! Hi, Jamie. Bye, Harriet. <laughs> what do you want, Harriet? I have to talk to Vicky. It's very important. Oh, okay. Vicky, door. I think you ought to know that my father told me the real facts about babies. Had to do with salmon swimming upstream to lay eggs. <laughs> Forget it. I'm set for life. <laughs>
laughter. Lovely and bright and soft curves, she's a small wonder. A child unlike other girls, she's a miracle. And I grant you, she'll enchant you at her sight. She's a small 